right, thank you to our presenters, and we have just under 10 minutes for questions. Uh, there is a microphone there, and a microphone there. Uh, the focus towards uh, Chris and Kirk's presentation, but it's germane to anything. Um, this issue of how people are treated uh, as members of the sexual minority community, for example, in institutions uh, like senior care facilities um, or n interactions with nurses that we hear about all the time. And we have this document called the Charter and the charter, and I think I'll reference, I think it's Article 7, protection of person, um, seems to speak to the kind of respect we as Canadians, whether we're uh, refugees, immigrants, born in Canada, naturalized Canadians, became Canadian citizens, are entitled to. And I don't know why we have to go through years and years of local, provincial, federal, local, provincial, federal, association, association, association meetings to get this country working the way the charter outlines we should. And I often wonder if all the time spent researching and talking to institutions might better be spent in talking and advocating for some kind of national charter establishment day where our society embraces that so that gay men like me who are aging towards those facilities don't even have to think about this. You know, it's, old, it's hard enough getting old. I have to worry about whether people are going to diss me in a care home. That's not our country. And I think we need to be more proactive in creating a general respect for people's rights rather than having to fight individual battles uh, wherever they arise. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, I can if you want. You go first, I'll follow up. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's like one of the things is that there are a, di a, a diversity of ways that you can affect change and like the charter um, thing that, from my experience, that usually ends up getting done through lawsuits. Um, so, in Newfoundland, <laughs> no, and I'm not either. In Newfoundland, uh, they just recently made X on available on birth certificates, and there is a new one um, which is setting a precedent in Canada that uh, a woman and two men are deemed to be the parents for a child. So it, it acknowledges that monogamy is over. And that, that case was won in Newfoundland. Um, and those are really excellent things. However, to get those, there's also the, the like need for education because people may not be aware of it, and there has to be a component that you educate the masses as well as those, uh, I guess, groundbreaking things. I think I would include all the defense and bring the charter to the people, because basically, if we wait to educate every individual group, um, I'll be gone. It's going to be a while. And your children will be gone. Mm -hmm. Um, I would add on, one of the challenges with lawsuits is it does require one person to step up and, and be willing to take on that fight, which definitely for older adults is a real challenge um, because they may not have the resources or the, you know, it's, it's physically taxing. Um, I would say that there are many ways to create social change. Like this is the thing that comes up a lot. It's like, we need to change society. I'm like there are, as Chris pointed out, many ways to create those change. Um, but the fact is, we are still dealing, you know, race, we've not conquered sexism, we've not conquered racism. These things are, it's going to take a long time. I would love to say that all we have to do is snap our fingers and all those things will be gone. But the fact is, I, you're right, I don't see any of these issues disappearing within several generations. I think that we will, like, I hate to say so cynical, I think that there's always going to be some people who are racist or sexist or homophobic or cisgenderist. 
contrast the washrooms we use went from gender specific to gender less. Yes. So yeah. somebody took the initiative and that relates back to respect and acceptance and Absolutely. Yeah, and so and again, that's one way. But I can I can guarantee you, not everyone loves that. My own brother, when I posted a photo of it in Halifax, is like, "Why do we need these?" So it does like you know that didn't change society. So he's still an idiot. <laughs> I mean, the bathrooms are still there, but you know it doesn't change all of society. It is one step. Like we have made significant progress yeah. uh, at multiple stages, but you know we can't change everyone's hearts and minds when one's well fell swoop, sadly. Actually, just have a couple of comments. So I belong to the Street Outreach team, which has just changed its name from the BCCDC. And one of my comments would be to Chris Shortall. Sorry. Um, I'm so glad you've done this work, and we have something to look forward to, because I've been grubbing around off the side of my desk for a queer cultural competency, looking at all the stuff in the States, and you are already there with those people. Thank you for doing that work. Thank you. <laughs> and I just have a little comment from somebody who worked with the Boys R Us, who isn't here this year because his job was terminated. Um, and he's Tuan Lu. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know he'd be so impressed with what's going on. Uh, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. And we know Tuan and we love Tuan. And he was around for 20 years with the program. Yes. And he really was one of those key uh, staff members that made it just historically something awesome. So we miss him as well. Thanks. Oh my God. You're just great. Where